Hey, good morning, everyone. Trackman44 here. Uh, you know, my brother-in-law gets me in a little bit of trouble every now and then. Today ain't no exception. He called me and said a buddy of his named Walter, uh, of course, I've known him my whole life, too, or his whole life. He's a lot younger than I am. Had a couple trees taken down his backyard. Do I want to come up and help him get them? Maybe get a saw log or two. Take a look in the background. I think that one back here is like 46 inch in diameter. I think uh, this one here is like 26 inch right here, and then I don't even remember what the other one, 19 or 20. So we got to get them guys on the trailer. But we're going to go for two today and then try to get the big boy on one load by itself. What I'm using here is a uh, steel 660 with a 30 inch bar. And uh, this particular tree here was a 46 inch at the butt cut. So I don't remember how many feet in from the butt cut we are, but uh, we're lacking about six inches of going through, so it's roughly 36 inch right here. So what you're looking at in the background with all the rounds that are cut and laying around, uh, those are actually the branches off of these trees. I don't remember how many trees there were, at the very minimum three, but there might have been, uh, I think there's one more that still needs to come down right now. What we're doing, we're trying to align this with the uh, parallel with the trailer by using a log dog and a winch, and then uh, this chunk of wood here to go ahead and cut it. Cut the log, in other words, change the direction in order to line it up with the trailer. I think I might explain it just a little bit later, but what we're doing here, we're, we're changing the direction of the log. Um, we call that cutting the log, or at least that's the slang term I grew up with. You go ahead and put a block or a, uh, or a pivot point or whatever, and then you go ahead and roll the opposing in and go ahead and change directions of the log. Once you get at the angle you want, then you go ahead and roll it forward till you, know, you need to change the direction again and continue. Because see, we still got to get out the opening in the gate yeah. and miss that. Yeah. So if we go straight for a while, then cut it one more time, we should be okay. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, why don't you just go ahead and use your cane hooks and roll them? Well, I tell you what, first off, these logs are several thousand pounds a piece. And uh, the ground is like a big soft sponge. It's just wet and soft as can be. And I mean to tell you, you, you just can't hardly roll those doggone things by hand. We tried uh, as much as we could when we got them going downhill. We did go ahead and move them by hand, but out here on just about on the level, it's all we could do to move them just a little bit. Now what we're doing here, we're loading logs like the old man taught me uh, how to load uh, with the tractor, you know, out in the woods in the trailer, the way he loaded with a uh, team of mules or team of horses. What we've done, we got our ramps on the side of the trailer, we got the two chokers or two chains uh, wrapped underneath the log, and then being pulled with the winch, which in that time was the horses or the mules, and whenever I was a kid, it of course was a tractor. And with that secured over there, and then we got a snatch block on this because it's a little bitty winch, and it's a pretty heavy log, 
we're just gonna go ahead and roll it right on up just like that. So go ahead. Keep an eye on this one. You're not really supposed to do what I'm doing standing on this side of the log, but we have two 20,000 pound chokers and uh, it's an aircraft 516 cable on the winch. We really don't have anything to be too concerned about. There is always that time though whenever they snap. But we're going to go put a, a stop on the other side of the trailer. Now, if you're wondering what we're doing here on this, uh, this somewhat of a butt cut, uh, we have to move it out of the way in order to get to that second log back there on the right-hand side. We have to uh, change the direction. That there is almost perpendicular with the trailer, and uh, we cannot roll that thing by hand. We just grunted and grunted and just couldn't do it. We're going to have to try to use rig the winch in a way that allow us to roll that out so we can shift that roughly 90 degrees. So this almost 90 degrees dead onto the trailer. And that's not helping us in the least bit. Now we're in the process of changing direction on log number two. Uh, you see we got it away from the uh, the stump cut over there. We did manage to get it out here in the middle where we could shift it a little ways this way or that, which is what we needed to do to get it headed to, towards the alley and the side of the trailer. Unfortunately, we just cannot get the trailer in there in a position where we can use a 12,000 pound winch. So we've got nothing but a little bitty old 110 volt electric uh, like a 1500 pound winch that we're using. Okay. It's a real light duty winch. Oh. Even with it being a light duty winch, you can really increase its capacity by using snatch blocks. I've had to rig as many as three snatch blocks before in order to uh, increase capacity to move something we needed to move. That's good. Let's see if we can roll it a little bit by hand. I can say that ground is soft enough and right here even though we're rolling just slightly downhill it's all we can do to move, move this silly log uh, just right up to the base of the ramp and then what we're going to do is we're going to place those uh, chokers in a V pattern underneath the center of that log so that we'll have two points of lift as it rolls up the ramps. Now remember I told you that was a light duty winch and it definitely is. You'll be able to listen to the the strain on the motor uh, relieve just a little bit as I give a little bit of aid with my with my cane hook. Now you don't really want to be where I'm at uh, whenever that log gets very high because you want to be able to jump out of the way so once it gets up there about knee high or so I get the heck out and get to the one end or the other in order to help from the end of the log instead of in the middle which is extremely dangerous. Of course it's only dangerous if something fails you know and uh, like I said we have two 20,000 pound chokers on there and then a 5 16 aircraft cable on the winch so I don't really think there's a whole lot to be concerned about but there's always that chance you know what I mean so um, 
you want to make sure you you stay clear of something like this okay. because it'll flatten you like a pancake. Okay. Probably stayed that one last lift too long because right right about there is is just just about beyond the maximum height you want to be uh, if you're in front of that log because okay. if it breaks and comes down those ramps it's going to come down very very fast and uh, get a little bit of age on you you know your reflexes ain't what they used to be so you better be uh, you better stay off to the end like I am now and when it comes to exercises like this remember my mantra. I've repeated it many, many times. Don't do as I say, and definitely do not do as I do. Simply because, you know, I don't do everything in the uh, the safest of manners sometimes, and that is uh, admittedly shortcoming on my on my part. Okay. Well, if it wasn't for seeing what's on the trailer, looking around the uh, looking around the yard, can't really tell we did anything, <laughs> except for that big bare spot in the middle, I guess. The big boy up there—that's going to take some. Uh, that's going to take some finagling. My little winch, my little winch had all it could do with these guys here. So there we have it—a fun afternoon with the brother-in-law. Uh, we did get a, a little bit for the sawmill. It's going to take a little bit to get the bigger one on, on the mill because my mill is only a 28 inch and it's, it's going to be a little tough. But uh, we'll make some boards out of it. The center of it's not real good, but there's uh, there's enough good around the periphery. We, it's it's worth the time. Have nothing else. Hey, there's a whole lot of firewood here, you know. But anyway, you know, we pretty much beat this for death. And this Tractor Man 44, and I'm out here, guys.